Okay, so now we're going to define a new symbol known as the Levi Chivita or uh, permutation symbol. The Levi Chivita or permutation symbol is given by Epsilon with subscripts J1, J2, and so on up to Jn, and is defined to be the number one if the permutation J1, J2, up to Jn is an even permutation. of the positive integers 1 through n. It is the uh, integer negative 1 if the permutation j1, j2, up to jn is an odd permutation. of the set of positive integers from 1 to n. And is 0 if j sub i is equal to j sub k for the uh, index values i or k being 1, 2, or up to n. So the Levi Chivita uh, permutation symbol has three possible values, 1, negative 1, or 0. It is 1 if the indices represent a uh, even permutation of the integers 1 through n. Negative 1 if the indices represent a negative or an odd permutation of the uh, integers 1 through n. And is 0 if there is a repetition of any of the, uh, any of the index values. All right. So uh, let's look at a, a three-dimensional example, or a, the three-dimensional uh, Levi Chivita sim uh, symbol. So in three dimensions, we have epsilon, and we choose to use i, j, k. And this is positive 1 if i, j, k is an even permutation. Of the positive integers 1, 2, and 3. Negative 1 if the permutation i, j, i, j, k is an odd permutation. of the positive integers, 1, 2, and 3. And is 0 if i equals j, or j equals k, or i equals k. In other words, a uh, repetition of the uh, index, where again, i, j, or k is some uh, ordered arrangement of the numbers 1, 2, and 3. And so in other words, a permutation of, uh, or represents a permutation of uh, the positive integers 1, 2, and 3. And so we have a simple formula for a uh, three-dimensional uh, Levi Chivita permutation symbol. This is the product i minus j times the product j minus k times the product k minus i, all of which is divided by 2. So, for example, epsilon 1, or let's actually use 3, 2, 1, or 3, 1, 2, uh, is 3 minus 1 times 1 minus 2 times 2 minus 3, all of which is divided by 2. This gives us 2 times negative 1 times negative 1 
all of which divided by 2, which gives us 1. And so the permutation 3, 1, 2 is even, uh, and this agrees with what we determined earlier. Okay, so let's look at examples that will have the permutation symbol uh, in a term. For example, epsilon i j times a sub i and b sub j. Now using Einstein's uh, summation notation, there are uh, two repeated indices, i and j, in this product, in this term. And so this means that we have a, uh, a product uh, for each index i and j, so we have a sum of a sum. So we have the sum over the index i times the sum over the index j of epsilon sub i j times a sub i and b sub j where uh, i and j are either 1 or 2 and so i and j range from 1 to 2 so if we expand this inner sum we have the sum over the index i of epsilon sub i1 a i b1 plus epsilon sub i2 a sub i b2. If we now expand over the index i, which again has a, a range from 1 to 2, we have epsilon sub 1, 1, a sub 1, b1, plus epsilon sub uh, 1, 2, a sub 1, b2, plus epsilon sub 2, 1, a2, b1, plus epsilon sub 2, 2, a sub 2, b sub 2. Now, in this sum, the uh, value of the permutation symbol, when we have a repeated uh, value, is 0. And so this term is 0, and this term is 0. And so the sum is simply epsilon sub 1, 2, alpha 1, b2, plus epsilon sub 2, 1, a sub 2, b sub 1. Now the value of the permutation symbol uh, with the indices 1, 2, this is an even permutation of the numbers 1 and 2, and so this is simply uh, the number 1. And uh, with the permutation 2, 1, that is an odd permutation of the numbers 1 and 2, and so this is negative 1, and so we have a1, b2, minus a2, b1. All right? So next we'll define uh, a new uh, term that will use the uh, permutation symbol in the definition. So let A be an n by n matrix, that is a square matrix. The determinant of A, which we denote debt A, is the sum of all signed elementary products from A, that is, The determinant of A is the sum of products, epsilon sub i, correction, epsilon sub j1, j2, and so on, up to jn, of the products A sub j1, 1, A sub j2, 2, and so on, up to A sub j, n, n. So we'll look at an example. Let the uh, matrix A be a 2 by 2 square matrix. Then the determinant of A is epsilon sub i j, A sub i 1, A sub j 2. 
So if we now expand the sum, we have that the only uh, values for i and j that uh, will contribute to the sum are the ones where we do not have repeated uh, indices, and uh, i and j range from 1 to 2. And so we have epsilon sub 1, 2, which means i is 1, j is 2, and so this gives us a sub 1, 1, a sub 2, 2, plus epsilon sub 2, 1, so i is 1, and j is 2, uh, correction, i is 2, j is 1, and so we have a sub 2, 1, a sub 1, 2. And this uh, gives us a sub 1, 1 times a sub 2, 2 minus a sub 2, 1 times a sub 1, 2. And we'll uh, change the order uh, in this product as these are simply numbers. And so we have a sub 1, 1, a sub 2, 2, minus a sub 1, 2 times a sub 2, 1. So notice that this gives us a simple way to determine the determinant for a 2 by 2 matrix. The determinant for a 2 by 2 matrix is simply the difference of the cross product of the uh, 2 by 2 matrix, that is uh, a sub 1, 1 times a sub 2, 2 minus a sub 1, 2 times a sub 2, 1. All right? So we'll end this lecture by considering the product of three matrices, A, B, and C. And first we'll consider uh, this product as a product of two matrices being uh, the product of the matrix A with the uh, matrix which is the product of BC and then as a product of two matrices being the, the matrix AB times the matrix C. And so the component in row I column J of this product is the sum over the index K of entries in row I of matrix A and column J of the matrix BC but this product is itself a sum, and so we have the sum over the index K of the entry in row I of matrix A times the sum over the index M, we'll choose the index M, of the entry in uh, row K of the matrix B and column J of the matrix C. Now using the distrib distributive law, we can rewrite this as a sum of a sum of products, and those products are A sub IK, B sub KM, C sub MJ. Now notice for each pair of uh, entries that the number of rows in the uh, entry on the left is the same at correction number of columns on the entry on the left is the same as number of rows in the entry on the right. So for the first pair we have uh, K and for the second pair we have M. And so this is simply a sum of, uh, of rows by columns where the uh, inner dimensions, the inner indices are the same for uh, each pair respectively. And so this is simply the component and row I column J of the product ABC. Now considering the uh, product as the product of two matrices AB and C and this is the sum of the index K of the uh, entries in row I of the uh, matrix AB and column J of the matrix C. Again, this product is a sum over a, an index, which we'll choose to be M. And so this is the sum over the index K of the sum over the index M of the component or entry in row I of the matrix A 
and column K of the matrix B. Once again, using the distributive law, we can write this as the sum of a sum of entries A sub I M, B sub M K, and C sub K J. And once again, this is a product of a roll by a column where the number of columns uh, on the left is, is equal to the number of rows on the right for each pair respectively. And so this is the component in row I, column J, of the product A, B, C. And so we have, uh, in effect, proven that uh, that the uh, product of three matrices is associative or that uh, matrix multiplication is associative. That is, it does not matter how we uh, group the terms as long as we do not change the order in which they appear. And of course, uh, for proof, uh, see above. We just, uh, just proved this. We have that the component In row I, column J, uh, the product of A and B, C is the same as the component in row I, column J, of the uh, product of A, B, and C, and this is the same as the component in row I, column J, of the uh, product A, B, C. All right. So uh, next time, we will look at uh, inverses and powers of square matrices and then uh, move on to vectors. So I hope you have enjoyed the fourth lecture. Thanks for watching.